Here we are, Patrick. And Patrick. Here's the door going down. Let's go up to the bow. Okay, let's get a scan here. Just see how we. How we have. There's a sister ship over there. Okay, well here we go with the lifeboats, and uh, these things here, when this ship was going to Vietnam, there were about 3,500 troops on this ship, so these boats here weren't here, all they had were orange life rings, and each one said 250 people per life ring with a web in the middle, so you knew if the ship was going down, you'd be uh, in the world of hurt swimming for one of those little life rings with 3,500 other guys trying to grab those suckers. And then one day we had a little deal where we were at the Port of Oakland and we decided to unload the life rafts into the port to see how fast we could do it. And it took us 35 minutes to get the first boat in the water tied up to the pier with everybody screaming at each other, trying to figure out how to do it. So, one thing you didn't want to do on this ship is have this sucker sink, <laughs> especially during a storm. One of the problems that the troops had, because this, this whole ship would be covered with guys in green khaki uniforms. Everywhere you look, just solid green, sitting on everything that wasn't moving. So few of the guys would end up with second degree sunburns from sitting out on the deck or falling asleep playing cards or whatever they were doing. And sometimes we'd have to climb up a, like a rope ladder up the side of this ship to get back in and uh, I can remember one time coming back when I was in Yokohama and this friend of mine was drinking. This Filipino guy, he was drinking like crazy. And I was right there in a the bar next to him. And he was coming up the side of the ship in about 20, 20 foot swells because there was a hurricane coming in. And he had two bottles of booze stuck in his belt. And unfortunately, one of the bottles started to slip. He grabbed for that, he slipped. We never saw him again for 20 minutes. And then when he finally came up, of course he was dead. So that was kind of a sad, that was the only time I saw anybody get killed on the ship. He was a pretty nice guy too. But So anyhow, one time I can remember being up on the bow, because I could never come up here. This is not my area, but one time I was on the bow, and it wasn't, uh, it didn't seem like there was much stuff up on the bow. But I always had confidence in the captain being up here because he knew how to steer the ship. At one time in Yokohama, I saw a freighter cutting in front of our bow and the captain was up here going like this. I told him to get out of the way. And then I realized that maybe he didn't have as much control of this ship as I had thought. Then, I remember one time in the Philippines when all of a sudden there was a grappling hook came over the side because we were getting taken the fuel on. And there was a Filipino crawling up the side of the ship. Me and my buddy Ken, we told him to get down, so he, he took off. But I think it was the same day when Ken took a sandwich, a meat sandwich, and he dropped it all the way down on the fuel deck, all the way down, which is whatever story that is. And a guy picked it up off the deck, just like this. 
and just just ate it. secret destination, except for we'd be on board a day before, and you'd look over the side in the Oakland Army Depot, and all you saw were troops lining up, coming in and just lining up, coming on board. And it was kind of a joke, because they wouldn't say where we're going, but everybody knew where we were going. So one day I went down to um, on the pier to see what was underneath all these containers that were all covered up, big boxes and stuff covered up. What the heck are they bringing to Vietnam? It must be bullets or something. And I looked in there, and it was cans of seven up. Uh, yeah, this. See, I used to work. This, I used to work right here. This was uh, my first job on the ship. I was a waiter, you know. So I had to come out here, and then when the when the seas got rough, you have to put these put these things up yeah. here, you know. And you got to wet this table down. Uh -huh. And one of the funniest things I ever saw in my life was a lady over there when the seas are rough and the the water was. The water was just going right along perpendicular or horizontal with the uh, the windows. Big old storm. Everybody was sick, and this lady was up there, and she threw up on the table and got up. And every place where her right foot hit, there was a big old pile of diarrhea on the floor. Oh, and she walked, and she had to walk from the front all the way out past everybody that was sitting down. Hmm. I know she must have been there. She was really there. And then this guy got, and half the people were sick anyhow, yeah. and they saw her throw up. And then this guy came out, this Filipino guy came out, and he had this uh, mop with, you know, was it red, it was real hot. Mm -hmm. He started to swash all this uh, puke. puke. <laughs> <laughs> and it made the whole place stink. And then everybody left. <laughs> Anyhow, this is a job I didn't last too long yet because I'm not a very good waiter. So they, they didn't keep me here very long. But this is where you had to, your uh, dependent. You had to dependent women. Well, you know, you probably you might have had your wife if you're married, come, you know, if you were on a ship like this. Anyhow, they'd bring them up here, and this is with kids, and uh, they'd treat them like it was a cruise. Uh huh. MSTS cruise. Oh. So you had your waiters. But uh, let's uh, head on back down this way, huh? It seems, uh, it seems small, you know, compared to what you remember things. So, I think I might have scraped off the paint. I don't know if there's enough light to see. There's some of those uh, cups. There's the plates over there. In fact, there's the plates. Uh, look at these here. Let's see if we can get a picture of this. Uh, see these plates right here? See that plate right there? When I was here last time, Ben gave me one of these. That's what I use for my uh, cat bowl right now. <laughs> Anyhow, this is where the waiters would line up here and they'd get their food for the, for the passengers. They'd just line up, come right along this thing here, and there'd be guys serving food, and back out the door you go and bring the food out to the people. This is where you worked, don't you? No, I was the waiter. I didn't work out. Yeah, we used to bring the food. Food for you. It's not like a fun cruise. So, yeah. The plush state rooms. This here was a good spot to be here. You know, I wish I could stay in a place like this. This is where the fantasy right here. 
Or if we were going to Vietnam, all the officers had these rooms. And you have officers up here. And usually E6 and above we have up here too. The Last Supper. Yeah, everybody's eating pretty good. Let's check out this over here for me. Look at this in here. Got the restroom. Here. So you share, actually you share a restroom between the two cabins. troop mess here and uh, when we had uh, 3,500 troops going to Vietnam the chow line went for 20 hours a day without shutting down. It would just be a line all day long. Mm -hmm. Never stop. Long line. <laughs> Automatically closes, huh? Oh, yeah. During the. Uh, oh, Pink. Pink chips, Robin. Oh, it's the ball. Oh, yeah. You know what those are? What? If there's water in there, those things will flip upside down. Oh, really? And then an alarm will go off. You got that? What? See those white balls? Yeah. If this boat gets wet, if water gets in the bilge down there, that ball will flip upside down, alarm. Oh, so that's part of the bills going. Yeah. So that way you know you get a leave. You know, I don't have that way. Hey, look at This is the lock right here. Yeah, yeah. That's the lock I was talking about when you, uh, when you trail it. Yeah. Like when you tow it, right? Yeah, and they, they gotta have that on a sort of color to turn. Yeah, this thing right here. But normally if you lock it while you're on the way, you're gonna lock it down, you gotta get a very steam back there. Yeah. So this here we're going right out here, and this is the going right on out to the water. Right? Look at the packing. This is as far back as you can go. This is your, this is your packing right here that we used to use. That there, huh? Yeah, you have to take this shit and force it in there and wake right it up. Right in here, keep it from leaking. Keep it from leaking. That's probably why this was laying here. Yeah. So that somebody might have changed it. Yeah. See, it's like lime, it's like wax. Like. Six. Just have to force it in there. Yeah. Yeah, now yeah, riveted. It tells you how old the ship is. Rather than the welding, welding, it's all riveted. Chamber funnel. It's a little packing gear. Plenty of packing gear. Packing plan. Packing? Yeah. All this stuff. Oh, yeah. The change. You don't want to run out of backing when you're out there. Nope. <laughs> hey, look, at these lays. Lays. look at the lays. Look at the lays. Look at this. There's a good shape. Watch out for the right there. There's a Cincinnati billing machine. Obviously, we are now in the machine shop area of the ship. Drill press, another lathe, all perfectly preserved. Take this lathe, put my shop at home. Give me both. Just turning out some good stuff. I could use a milling machine, to be honest with you. <laughs> Get my boat. Take some custom things for it. What's down there? It's part of the engine room over here. Zone 3 danger, engine space, keep clear. Those lifters there, it looks like. Yeah, big dis. Uh, steam, steam turbine. It's just big mountain, look at those. Look, look up here, look up there. OK. 
catwalks up here. Yes, the main steam. Auxiliary steam. Steam return. Oh, all this material, all the asbestos line pipe. Oh. Yeah, plus it's around 100 degrees inside this room. Oh, yeah, you can imagine how hot it was out in the South China Sea. Here, this is the life rafts here. These things are tied up on a deck. You have just piles of these things. If, you, if, you, you know, if the ship went down, you'd need Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of life rafts over here. See so if you can get a picture of the water. Where the troops you remember this thing, they put 30 in the boat and 30 in the water? I think you just hang, you know, every man to himself. 60 in there. I know. <laughs> it's called the it's called who's alternate. counting? When the ship's going down, who's counting? It's called the alternate every 20 or 30 minutes. Johnny Wiggins. I'm going to be out here and I'm going to be walking through these shit by myself, man. I can hear all kinds of shit. Can you really? Oh, it sounds sound like ghosts or something like that? Yeah. At least the noise, you know, a lot of times you be below the waterline so you can hear anything. Yeah. That's in the water. So it sounds kind of spooky. Oh, man. <laughs> Probably are ghosts on this ship. Well, they say they are. I'm glad I ain't met none yet. They say there are. I don't think there's any on this ship. They say there's ghosts on this ship? Some, some of them. Glomar Explorer. It's got ghosts on it. I've been working over there in the dark, too. With the Glomar? Yeah. You see any ghosts over there? No. Are any of the areas of that ship classified, or can you go to all of them? Oh, I don't know. I just go where they tell me to go. <laughs> I had a tour of the boat, but, you know, I, he didn't tell me that it was classified. Probably not. Not, not anymore. anymore. I, I think they're classified. It wouldn't be sitting in the middle of a suit yeah, on bag. Battery back here. I gotta put this down here. Actually, there's a spacious bunk right here because I can get my knees up. I always like the bottom bunks too. Yeah, I like the top ones because it's easier to make your bed. You know, <laughs> when we used to cut a guy's guy mess with you on the beach, you cut all his straps right and just leave four uh -huh. hanging there. Uh -huh. He dive in there. <laughs> you know, we do like. <laughs> Here's the head. The yeah, hair and all. We got all these things here. Brush your teeth. We just lined up. Shave. Bunch of guys lined up there. Take a shave. Ah, yeah, I need one of these. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Hey, give me some privacy, man. Huh? <laughs> a lot of privacy. When oh, you don't take a long time right here. No, you don't sit there and read the Sunday paper, that's for sure. You got your toilet bowl on the toilet paper on it. I'm on right there. Damn, did you have no seat? No. No, you sit right on the porcelain. Really? Mm-hmm. Dang. Here's, oh, look at this here. There's more That's why they call that the porcelain bus. Look <laughs> <laughs> at all the ships. Yeah, up here. All the ships I've been on, we had, we had uh, seats. It's because you were in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> These are Army guys. These are Army guys. guys. <laughs> that's, why you went the, that's why you went in the Navy, right? Rough guys. <laughs> yeah, the Army, man. Yeah. Army guys didn't right know. Right they didn't want to keep you on here long, still, so they had nice and cold for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know how cold that would be? Woo! Take a seat here, please. Not to worry about dobbling around. No, I don't spend a lot of time in here reading the newspaper. Oh, here's some more right here. Anyhow, I used to have a. Uh, oh, I gotta get you some film. I got. I used to have a fire station down here. Did you ever have fire drills, Jackson? Yeah. I used to have a fire drill down here. One time I came down to a place like this and I opened up the door, it was full of troops. I just opened up the door and the only thing I saw was puke flying across. And I was supposed to go in because my fire station was inside there. And I just saw guys puking and, and they were just body to body and all sweaty and everything. And I just closed the door and thought, I hope there's no fire in there. The area is secured. This is where we want to go up here. And then, good part. Get up in my bunk right here. Yeah! That's where I used to sleep, right up 
Right That's what you did best, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I was working, I spent about 90% of my work time right here. In my bed. Yeah, uh, where's Briggs? A little light right up here. The reason I got this bump too is because, uh, see, this is odd. When I came in here, there was, uh, I came on here with my buddies, Max and uh, Richard Haycock. And they were, uh, we were wondering if it's all going to be filled. Turn your light off, there's like, there's like six people in here. Yeah. So I said, oh, man, you're going to be in a room with a bunch of Filipinos, man. The first thing I saw was Levi's hanging right on that locker right behind Jackson. So right away we knew, man, there was going to be another guy my age. <laughs> That's what Ken Farias was. So right away I had a buddy. It's my best buddy was Ken Farias. But the reason I had this bunk is because the guy that had that, that bunk right there, He'd been on this ship for 20 years, oh. and he had a scar on his face, went like, went like from right here, all the way like this. And he said he was sitting right here in this spot, and a wave hit that window right behind him, that portal right behind him, and a piece of glass flew off and hit him right in the face right there and just cut him. Where was he sitting there right there? He was sitting right here. So that's why I got the bump, because I was the last guy in the room. I got shield or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of these guys had. They had little curtains. I, I never had a curtain, but everybody had little curtains going across here to, to keep them. Uh, it's a little privacy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I never felt I needed it. But this is a pretty good place to be because I, I could. Uh, my my job was right down here. So. Which was your locker? This is my locker right here. Put everything I want right in here. It doesn't take long to clean that out when you get off the ship. But sometimes we get like flying fish would come through this window, this porthole right here. But in the exact same room, in fact, this is when we were in Taiwan one time, Keelan, we left Ta Keelan. And they always they always wanted this thing down, but we always had this, this steel plate was up, you know, tied onto here. Yeah. Because when you got where it's warm, you always want to have the window open. That's how the flying fish would fly through here. But one time we had just we all had the porthole down, and a wave hit the side of this thing, which just grew on the other side, and it broke the glass just like that happened to that guy that was in my bunk. And that made a sound I can still remember. It, it sounded like thousands of little splinters of, of glass. Just oh. So we broke two portholes, and that and this ship was going. This here would go underwater during storms. So it'd always be swirling out here during a storm. You always see that. Yeah. But then when that window broke, that was underwater, so water was coming in into these guys' room. So what they did is they took a mattress, took one of these mattresses and stuck it in the hole. Keep the water out. I think half the scouring powder ended up in the Philippines when we got on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head up this way. There's a Filipino. He used to he had his chair right here, and he'd cut your hair, and he'd have a. There'd always be cutting solid every night right here, about three or four hours, just cutting, getting about buck, two bucks. And that guy's probably he probably retired, retired, went to the Philippines. The guy was like a millionaire when he probably got off the ship. But half these guys worked on the ship. Since 1945, I was on here in 65, so they, they spent their entire lives right here in this area. I mean, they, they had the same room for 20 years. Same job. 
Well, let's go up here to the uh, the day room. Smaller box. Here's my bathroom right here. This is where I go to the bathroom. Limits to troops. Yeah. Uh, I get a little privacy. Yeah, you get a little privacy here. Right? Little doors, but you got, you know. So you had uh, plastic seats, man. You have to sit on the porcelain. Well, it's not bad. Oh, yeah. It's better than the troops. Yeah. Sit there and. Two little sinks, man. Yeah. But we had a sink in our room, too. So you didn't have to use this one. Just wash your hands. Okay, I told you before what this, this sheet here is. What, what is this sheet right here? What that sheet is? Huh? You know what this sheet is? Uh -huh. You know what that sheet is, Jackson? Uh, this sheet. This one is what that one. I guess it would not mess up in night vision. No, this is here. Oh, we used to show our movies right here. This is where our movies were done. Movie. I thought it was for me. So if you sat on the wrong side, the whole movie would be backwards. Yeah. <laughs> and if you sat on the other right side, then you get the right movie. So then when you go out, you go out right here. This is the way out right here. This is the game way out. Yeah. That was on both sides. Yeah. See, like most time we go out this one, the one. So here's, the, uh, here's that board. Well, Tell you when to come back in. Get your light off a little bit. Take your knife out. Remarks. Look at 1970. They must have had this. They might have towed this thing over 100 point or something for some work. I can get back up where we can. But this is where they check it back on and off the ship. I used to have, I had a job in here where I'd come in here at 5 in the morning. And my job was to clean it up. And it, it, this, this whole place would be full of Filipinos playing cards at 5 in the morning. Every morning, guys would be out here. And the whole place would be just littered with Coke cups and drink cups. These guys would be in here drinking and playing cards. And as soon as I'd walk in here with a broom and a mop, man, those guys would all look at me and get up. And just go to bed for a couple hours. <laughs> I don't know where they went. <laughs> and then on payday, payday, what they do is you see a guy walking along with a, uh, a board. You see a guy walking along with a board. You see a guy going by with this long board with green felt on one side. And you see another guy walking by and he's got, he's got like four by eight plywood. Then another guy walking by and he had these legs. He had these, you know, table legs. Then you go down to this room and these guys are throwing craps, man. There'll be a guy with money without all this money, and these guys have a crap in. So I did, I stood, there was a guy, there was this guy, this uh, real skinny guy, he looked like about 90 years old, he's standing here. See, and then you had the Filipino waiters, and they'd come up, they'd line up there to the right, and, it, and they'd up, and they'd, all the Filipinos would be in here eating. And I stood right here and I had I had all rice and these steam things here. And ice cream scoop. So I'll bring the light down a little bit, because you I had an ice cream scoop right here. And my job was at every meal, a Filipino waiter would take their order from the guy there and he'd come here and he'd go, okay, I want you know meat and I want uh, potato or uh, uh, carrots and two scoop. They never said scoop, so oh, two scoop. And that, that was my job. I sat here with scoop. And it's two scoop on every plate. Never missed a plate, two scoop. <laughs> every order ended the same way. Want steak, want this, two scoop rice. <laughs> That was my job. Dang. <laughs> For a while. The army sounded really exciting after that, huh? <laughs> yeah, really, that's why when I got drafted, I figured, well, I'm going to go. <laughs> You've been around for 20 years. <laughs> you see this bench right here? Look at this. See that? What do you think that is, Jackson? I think you might stand up. I know, this guy was like five foot. 
tall, maybe four foot eight. This Phil Painter used to wash the dishes here and he had to stand on the stool. He had his maid before. He was so short. Sometimes you'd be up on deck and you had roast that night. They didn't eat all the roast, so there'd be about you'd see about five or six roasts because it's just shooting out of the side of the ship into the ocean. It's flying right out of that sucker. Up, let's sing that one. Yeah. Oh. That's why they got these heavy doors. These yeah. things blow off. Yeah. <laughs> See it. Because I remember my first show, we had uh, three of these. Oh, really? Yeah. So look how many they got here. Nine. Well, you got a crew of 200 on the ship. Speak, so, man. anyhow, one, one time in uh, about 60, uh, or uh, December 66, or 65, one guy came down with meningitis on the ship. You know how serious that is on a close in, in uh, a small place. So we had to stop in the middle of the ocean, and a plane came out of Midway and dropped all these boxes of um, pills for meningitis. And they gave, I think they either gave us a shot or they made everybody line up here. And every every single person on the whole ship had to come through here and take pills for meningitis because one guy had it. Okay, there's a chart room right there, Yokohama Harbor, right here. Give me the keys to the ship. The keys to the ship. <laughs> let's, go, let's go for a ride. This is a, definitely a chart room. I wonder what all these, uh, these things are here. This tells you all the wind directions are there? Yeah. Port starboard. Yeah. The knots, the speed. What was it? The bridge here. There's all the stuff off the deck here. This is off the, uh, off the outside of the bridge. This is a weather vane. Yeah. All the head forward. I'd love to have one of those. Stop. Here. Port engine, starboard engine. Over here we get the captain's chair. It's right in the radar mast. So. Oh, this is where I used to sit when I was in the Mercer Marine. Yeah, all the time. Hard right. <laughs> yeah, I set up uh, some coffee. Set up a couple martinis. <laughs> <laughs> I never got drunk when I was on this ship. Very often. <laughs> It was illegal. You had a radar here. It wasn't take, worth taking a risk having booze on a Navy ship. No, actually, there were a lot of guys drunk on this ship. So you have to do it.